Well, the embargo is finally over, and I can show you the $2,500 Lulzbot Taz 6. And here it is. That's not the Lulzbot. That's the $250 TiVo Tarantula. And there's no printed parts. I'll show you this on today's Film of Friday. So I went from a $2,500 printer to a $250 printer, including shipping. This is the TiVo Tarantula. It's one of the most popular kits right now. It was $250 on eBay with free shipping on a slow boat from China. It only took a month to get here and about another month for me to find time to put it together. For $250, this is actually a very good kit. The quality of components is good and the community that supports it, there's a huge following for this printer. And they have some excellent videos. Several people have put together step-by-step -step videos on how to put this thing together. Now you need that because it comes with a nice illustrated manual with step-by-step -step and even numbers with the parts, nuts and bolts listed with a number to match. But it only goes up to step seven. So you get about a third of the way through and the manual runs out. So that's where you got to rely on what the community has put out there. It's really not a tough printer to put together. I did mine in scattered 10 minute, 20 minute, 30 minute periods. So I really can't tell you how long it would take you, but I'm going to guess if you've got mechanical ability, five, six hours, maybe. But it's really not that tough, and it's a great printer for tinkering. So if you want one to, you know, not invest a lot of money and you want to tinker and make it better, this is a great one to start with. And they give you everything you need, packaged nicely. They even give you a couple rolls of, of filament, PLA. A PLA clear and a PLA blue is what I got. These are nice little filament spools. They fit perfectly on the Fabricator Minis, which are back here. If anyone knows where to get these small filament spools, let me know in the comments below. I'd like to get some. So overall, I think it went together pretty well, although I ended up with like... I don't know, three bags of extra nuts and bolts that I honestly don't know what to do with them. So I'm sure I got some mistakes in here somewhere, but it actually printed really well. And let me show you how well it printed by starting with my infamous chest pawn. If you want more technical details about this printer, stay tuned past the credits and I'll cover it all. So here it is printing the chest pawn with some green PLA that I had lying around. This is actually inland PLA. And I was really impressed how well this thing printed. Everything is perfectly round. It's pretty smooth. I got some ribbing on the sides, but not bad at all. So the next step was to print 3D Benchy. Now I printed one without a fan, and I did the same thing in the pawn. I didn't have a fan blown. But then I put a fan on the corner just to blow across this thing for the second Benchy. And it did make a huge difference. There's no fan built into this design so you got to do your own thing but here they are side by side and you can see with the fan it's a lot smoother around the base so next I decided to try this filamentive recycled pet G filament I got from the company filamentive and I printed a chest pawn with that and it came out really good now the flow was a little bit off so like there's some pitting but that was my fault not the filament so then I tried a big print because everyone's concerned about this single threaded rod and the fact that the axis may sag and affect the print. I gotta tell you, it didn't affect this at all. This thing printed beautifully. And this is that PET-G. I'm really impressed with this filament. Now I printed it at 245 degrees and there's no temperature setting on uh, the filament itself. So I'm just going by typical PET-G. But it printed really well. I still gotta fix some flow issues. The flow rate was a little bit off so I got some stringing and a little bit uh, extra plastic around the knobs and stuff. But look at look at how good it stuck to this bed. And all I did was I put a piece of glass on top of the heated bed and uh, and then just a little bit of glue on that, that glass. And so there's some glue I gotta rub off, but this thing is just excellent. No warping, just fantastic. And the dimensions are such the LCD fit perfectly inside of it. And this is nice because an LCD comes with this kit. You don't have to buy that separate. Everything is included. It's a great kit and this is some great filament. So here's the finished design close up. I'll put a link to this in the description below. 
It's a really great design and it printed really well. Now I got to get the flow right. You can see extra plastic on the posts and stuff, but I'm really happy with this filament. Now I know some people had concerns about this printer because it's got a single Z-axis threaded rod. So the idea that this would sag, but really this is the same basic design as a Da Vinci Junior. And that thing prints pretty well. And so this is just a little bit bigger version of it, and I think it printed just fine. No sagging. In fact, that LCD cover I printed printed excellent, nice dimensions, and I printed the back cover on the a Flash Forge Dreamer, and these things fit together beautifully. So the dimensions are perfect. I, I don't think this is sagging at all. And the fact that it can print PET-G says it can probably print other filaments. And uh, this filament of PET-G, which is recycled, is actually really good filament. If it wasn't any good, I'd tell you. You know that. I plan to use this on other projects, and I got a roll of uh, recycled PLA as well. And I'll tell you what, I like this company in addition to the filament. They actually support this channel, and they support Filament Friday through Patreon, monthly patre Patreon donation. That's the way to support the channel. They believe in what we're doing here, and I really appreciate it. So it's not just, you know, give me filament and get some free advertising. No, they're really supporting the channel, and I, I want to thank them, plus all my Patreon supporters. They make this happen. They, they're the ones that contribute to help make this free for everybody else. And if you want to see this continue, if you like what I'm doing here, please, a dollar a month to my Patreon account. There's a link up here. I know I ask for this all the time. But it's what, it's what keeps this channel going because I'm making less on AdSense now than I was a year ago. So they're just not paying as much or people aren't clicking on ads or they're using ad blocker. I don't know, but it's, it's, it's hurting the channel. There's no doubt about it. So Patreon is what's keeping this thing going. So if you want to see Filament Friday continue, and I got some new stuff in the works. The Patreon people know all about it because I keep them informed. Uh, I got some videos that I've showed them. I went to the Rep Rep the Midwest Rep Rap Festival. I did a full summary of it. That's on the Patreon page. I got some new videos that I'm working on behind the scenes. They're seeing those. So you get your bucks worth. I think you do anyway. So anyway, enough of that. Um, I think this is an excellent printer and I can highly recommend this kit for 250 bucks. And I know if you shop around, I've seen you can get this cheaper. And there's other versions of it, I think, with a bigger bed and some of them with a dual extruder, I believe, has been released now. But don't quote me on it. I don't know everything about it yet. I'm still learning. But this particular one is the low-cost, uh, simple, single extruder version, and it works really good. So I can recommend it. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you got to give it a thumbs down, go for it. It still helps the channel. And subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. I got more videos coming, and there's a whole bunch in the past. Go check them out. If you're a DaVinci user, I know I've had a lot of people asking me about DaVinci. I got some stuff planned. Try to get DaVinci back on here. Not really a stock. I'm going to show you how to take a DaVinci and try to make it better. So that's coming, so stay tuned for that. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time on Film of Friday. So, technically speaking, this is not one of those cheap acrylic frame 3D printers. It's got 2020 aluminum extrusion for the frame and 2030 for the cross beam and the Y axis. Now, there is some acrylic on it. The brackets holding the motor and the carriage here in the center. That's made out of a laser cut 5 millimeter or 3 8 inch thick black acrylic. But it seems pretty solid. Now, it also has acrylic frame for the LCD and SD card, which is included, which surprises the heck out of me. And also a frame for the MKS base motherboard, which is the same motherboard that's used in the Fabricator Minis. I really like it. So it's not an Arduino with a shield. They even included a fan to blow on the board to keep it cool. That's a nice little feature. And the wiring is a treat. Everything has connectors. The motors, NEMA 17 motors, have connectors on both ends, from here down to the board. And even the stop switches are pre-wired with a harness, so no soldering required. 
the heated bed, all pre-soldered with cap tom tape covering things. Just route the wires, connect them, you're done. So assembly is really not that bad, and the construction is high quality. The brackets in the center are a little bit weak. They could improve there. There's definitely things you can make better about this printer, but at 250 bucks, you got a lot of room to invest and make a better printer out of it. But it's pretty good right out of the box once you get it assembled. So I can highly recommend this printer.